Uh, hello, uh, I'm Vanit Kachenko, I'm with uh, Percona, and uh, today I would like to talk about SSD, one of my favorite topics, and uh, MySQL. And uh, answering from the most popular question, this talk is uh, already available online. I give you a couple seconds if you want to open it and browse back and forth while I'm talking. So, let me start with spinning disk. Our uh, world, our data is still mostly on spinning disks. It's still most deployment of data based on these uh, rotational, rotational drives. And uh, we try to get more performance out of it, but it actually comes to physical, uh, physical limits. Uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> uh, what else you can do? First, you might try to increase the rotate more and more, you know, there's 720, 10,000 RPM, 15,000 RPM, and probably that's only as much as you can do because if you try to rotate more, it's uh, uh, not good. And, uh, and uh, you have, uh, we have only milliseconds response time. We operate in milliseconds uh, response time range. Uh, what else you can do? You can put uh, more uh, spindles on it. You can uh, put more and more spindles. Try and like four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. You put eight spindles, trying to get uh, more performance. But actually, what you get, your response time is not uh, getting better. Well, actually, you can transfer more data per unit of time. Like, yeah, you transfer more data, but it's still milliseconds. You, you don't improve uh, uh, response time. It is vibrate in milliseconds range. And uh, there's actually quite a big difference between when you speak about memory and uh, spinning disk. It's nanoseconds against milliseconds. And it's a million times difference. Actually, my scale is not quite uh, proper because I don't have been on pixel resolution on my laptop. Uh, it's, uh, if uh, I put in proper scale, it could be uh, like one to million. And uh, what uh, it gives to us, when we operate uh, totally in memory, when, you, when our data fits into memory, and then when we occasionally our data grows, when we exceed memory, we have very significant uh, performance drop. Uh, you see, it's kind of exponential function. And uh, at some tipping point, when we increase data on 10%, we can see like 70% uh, throughput drop. It is a very painful uh, drop performance point. So this is where flash comes into place. Flash totally fits in, 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 into the middle of the picture because flash provides you microseconds range response time. And uh, having flash, we still have that uh, performance drop, <laughs> but it actually helps us to have pretty decent uh, performance gain, like five to 10 times difference. I will show you some uh, numbers from my benchmark. So, uh, let's talk about Flash. Actually, the uh, name is uh, quite, uh, quite good because uh, the name Flash handles kind of two, two goals. First, what keeps in mind, it's uh, really fast because it's Flash. But also it comes to how Flash internally handles erasing data. So, internally, internally Flash, to erase data, it uses also this kind of Flash process. And it uh, touch quite a wide range of area. Uh, we have raised like from 128 to half terabyte range. And actually that flash process is kind of slow. So uh, it uh, defines, uh, it limits flash performance. So it's kind of interesting. Flash because fast and the internal flash is kind of slow. And the both names handles uh, name it on flash quite well. So we have this uh, erase process. Internally, to erase data, you operate on uh, up to half uh, 
megabyte data range. So, uh, how flash operates? In flash, you only write once. Uh, usually, it comes with four kilobyte blocks. You write, you write on flash with in four kilobyte blocks, and you write only once. When you write one time, you cannot uh, rewrite your data. You need to rewrite your data. You need to erase it. So it's kind of a process. Write. Erase and the erase is slow. Again, there's no no rewrites. When you try to write the same area, it actually comes to end of the list. It's kind of sequential sequential uh, appending data to the end to the end of the list. Yes, yeah, so we have sequential sequential uh, uh, kind of uh, operation of sequential rewrites <laughs> uh, in flash. And uh, what it uh, give us? We can uh, come up with uh, this kind of picture. Some of pages are uh, rewritten and cannot be used, and some pages are useful. And when you need to erase this block, you cannot also just uh, erase this block because you have good data. So before uh, erasing this block, Flash needs to move this data to some another already uh, erased area. That's why you have for Flash is a, a right amplification factor because Flash internally actually can write more than you write from uh, your uh, application. It also defines uh, flash performance. And uh, uh, actually, software software which you put on your flash, not you, but uh, which your flash vendor provides, is uh, uh, very important. It, uh, as much as, as important as uh, Android or uh, IO, Apple iOS on uh, your smartphone. Uh, without uh, Android, your smartphone is uh, useless. I might uh, uh, argue if uh, Apple iOS is uh, useful, but that's a different topic. And uh, anyway, in, in Flash, uh, you have uh, your data uh, and sometimes execution stored uh, uh, on Flash. And uh, that software, that software uh, is important because what uh, that software does, it provides a log structured file system when you do only data uh, uh, sequential writes. It uh, provides a weird uh, uh, leveling uh, because it needs to make sure that you erase your data uh, evenly. Because erase is kind of bad operation for flash. You can uh, do only limited uh, limited amount of uh, erasing for flash life cycle. And it comes to garbage collector. You see, uh, flash needs internally to take care about uh, uh, already used blocks and uh, do that all data moving uh, operations. So uh, quality, quality of that software is uh, uh, really, really important. So make sure you use uh, good uh, flash vendors. And about uh, flash, uh, flash types, we have uh, SLC and uh, MLC, two big, um, most popular uh, kind of flash used right now. And the SLC stands for single uh, level cell. When SLC from array state, you can go only one cell, can go only to two states, zero and one, the single level. And with MLC, you have two bit, two bit MLC. From array state, you can go to four different states. And the MLC three bits, uh, apparently you can go to eight different states. So uh, this uh, uh, comes to quality of your flash. You see, with SLC you put only two levels. With MLC you put four different levels on the same amount of area. Uh, uh, so it defines as uh, SLC mm, is uh, much more stable and uh, provides better uh, quality because per uh, given area you need to perform less uh, less operations. And uh, also it defines. Uh, life cycle of a flash. Uh, again, as I said, you can do only limited amount of uh, erase cycle in your flash. For LCLC, we're speaking about 100,000 time uh, erase cycles. For MLC, it is much less. Actually, previous generation of MLC, we're speaking about like 10,000 erase, erase cycles for a lifetime. And for, actually, for a new generation MLC, which is 25, nine, 25 nanometers, 
It's actually even less. We're speaking about maybe like five, five thousand raising cycle per per cell. So it define uh, uh, that uh, properties that defines quality of your flash. SLC provides a very reliable, very good performance, but it also comes with uh, only a limited amount of uh, capacity because you can put only limited amount per, per given space. So I know uh, you. I guess we can operate like only to up to 800 gig uh, on given card for. SLC. And also it's a kind of uh, expensive, we're speaking about $30-$50 dollars per gigabyte for MLC cards, uh, SLC cards. And the MLC cards, uh, it's kind of otherwise. You can have very big uh, cap uh, capacity cards over one terabyte. It comes uh, cheaper, like $10-$15 dollars per gigabyte you can get now. And uh, uh, as drawbacks, you get uh, uh, less lifetime because we you have less uh, uh, cycles and it is a uh, less uh, reliable and uh, to deal uh, to deal with it actually uh, MLC vendors comes with some internal reserve space for example if you look into a very dense flash max 1.4 card it provides 1.4 terabyte visible for users but internally it also has 600 gigabyte of reserve space which not available for users, but Verdant uh, software uses that space for, again, for garbage collector, for uh, leveling, and for uh, to increase the life cycle. Because you can use uh, uh, already broken uh, MLC cells from uh, reserved space. So you see the uh, ratio of useful and the uh, internal space, maybe quite uh, significant. Now let's talk about uh, SATA against the PCIe. It is a big uh, war story going on. So, uh, SATA cards. SATA cards are especially uh, made to a big kind of uh, a replacement of hard drive. You see, this is Intel SATA card and this is hard drive. They're kind of identical, the same form factor, the same uh, connectors. So you kind of, kind of uh, can uh, replace one by another. Uh, uh, so it sounds uh, like just an easy uh, 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 replacement, but let me tell you my benchmark story. I uh, went and bought uh, two Intel 320 SSD cards. Uh, I was going to benchmark it. But uh, as soon as you open your server, you figure out actually the server is not a desktop. When you open your server, you see uh, you need a kind of uh, space to put uh, this card into, you need additional power. If you look into server internal office, no power, uh, no power cables to put into. And you need additional, additional uh, controller and uh, cables. Cables are important. So my first setup, which I come up with, was like this. <laughs> well, you see, we have space, uh, we have power, we have cables. It works uh, actually pretty well. Not sure if you want to put it into your production system. <laughs> But uh, for benchmark that works uh, quite well. So to have a more polished setup, I come up with this external enclosure, uh, which provides you power and space. And you can put uh, in this one uh, like eight uh, different uh, cards. For RAID controller, I did some research. Uh, this uh, actually seems too good, uh, good enough uh, RAID uh, cards, which you, you can use uh, uh, LSI. 9211 and LSI 9260. Uh, 9211 is a kind of basic entry level card. It still handles the uh, uh, workload quite well. And 9260, it comes with a uh, cache. So it can give you better performance. So we have uh, uh, LSI cards, we have space. And after that, if you uh, figure out, you need actually a cable because LSI. Apparently, in the external enclosure, they use different connector types. So, you need additional 50 bucks to spend to, uh, on uh, that uh, cable, and then you're ready to go. It's an uh, easy setup. PCIe, uh, PCIe is different. PCIe is just uh, you take your PCIe card and put into your PCIe slots into your server, and you pretty much uh, are ready, ready to work. 
But as a drawback, PCIe is not hot swappable. But with that, uh, my uh, SATA setup you actually can uh, remove and uh, replace SATA drives on, on fly. Now, uh, le uh, let's move to benchmark, benchmark side. Yeah, we all know that benchmarks are lying. We don't believe benchmarks, but flash, flash brings it to totally new level of life. <laughs> <laughs> when you benchmark a card, you can see it's actually internally it has different, different states. Like uh, uh, state A when it show best performance, state C when uh, your garbage collector is working, and the state B is kind of traditional state. And the bad side, you actually have no idea what current state of your card is. <laughs> the flash card does not provide you internal state. And uh, well, uh, apparently flash vendors, they like to publish numbers from state A. The numbers look good, but they just kind of don't provide you a full, uh, full uh, story. Another benchmark problem is uh, capacity. Apparently some flash setups, the more you feel you flash, the less performance you have. So it, uh, the performance of flash also depends on uh, how much uh, space you use. Again, it, it comes to that garbage collector algorithm. Garbage collector algorithm, they like to have more free space. When you fill fully your car and you don't have enough internal space reserved, you get a picture like uh, this one. When you fill car almost fully, the throughput drop can be significant, like five times. And again, benchmarks vendors, they like to publish results with low utilization. The numbers kind of looks better when you have a, a, a low card utilization. And another story, again, back to uh, internal uh, state. When you benchmark your card several times, each time you get different performance. Because as a card uh, change the state on the fly, when you fir run first time, you get a red line. Is again Intel 320, and when you run the same benchmark second time, you're partly getting much uh, much more performance. So that uh, all makes benchmarks of SSD incredibly hard to get uh, reliable numbers. You spend a lot of time. So benchmarks uh, are uh, not uh, not uh, not quite uh, reliable. And uh, now it's also interesting story is file system. Uh, it may be not totally related to flash, to flash, but for uh, you want to use a file system that provides you better, uh, best performance. And uh, also we often ask what kind of file system should should I use for my my scale setup. And uh, our uh, our usual recommendation was you use uh, XFS because. XT4, XT3, uh, they do, uh, 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 they have that kind of bug or feature that uh, they serialize I/O in a, if you use a synchronous uh, I/O in or direct mode, and uh, that uh, can be quite significant uh, performance problem for Flash because uh, Flash uh, likes uh, many parallel threads, and uh, XT3 and 4 uh, internally makes it. Uh, to one thread uh, I.O. in synchronous mode. So our usual recommendation was use uh, XFS with flash. But uh, apparently XFS in asynchronous mode, they also they have that bug uh, with the serialization. Uh, and it is important because MySQL, new versions of MySQL, they use uh, asynchronous I.O. library. So uh, to write data, MySQL use asynchronous I.O. And then you come to this bug in XFS. That's a, and the XFS already fixed bug in source code, so XFS developers are totally good. They claim like uh, four uh, times improvement uh, with a bug fix. The only question is when it will become in the uh, Euro kernel, or maybe you are comfortable to compile a file system by yourself and put new file system with source code fix. So, yeah, that's what you, what choice you have. XFS, XC3, you kind of not uh, operate uh, quite well. What about uh, ButterFS? I'm hearing a lot of story. ButterFS, 
going to solve all your flash problem and just designed to work on flash. And uh, then uh, I'm asking her a simple question. Did you try actually to put significant I.O. workload on battery fast? Uh, your answer is no. I actually tried. And, uh, my simple uh, response is battery fast is not ready even close to, to be used in, in production. And uh, to add actually more confusion to this file system topic, uh, my scale internally my scale internally in ADB internally in ADB use reads in synchronous mode and the writes in asynchronous mode. So what file system to, to choose? I leave it uh, uh, up to you. It seems uh, right now at this point of time, if we speak about significant uh, uh, write intensive application in asynchronous mode, actually XT4 looks better. But when you have that bug fix available in XFS, then probably XFS if XFS will be able to provide four times better throughput, it may be uh, more preferable. So let's uh, let's uh, compare. Uh, let's do some benchmark. Even the benchmark are hard. I try to get some base sense of uh, numbers what we can get. Again, this probably uh, does not make sense at all because I'm trying to compare different uh, SLC, MLC, SATA, PCIe in uh, one bunch. But I want to get number together to just give you basic sense what kind of performance you can expect. So I took uh, eight uh, higher hard drives in a RAID 10. I took a, a stack uh, SLC, SATA SLC card. I took a stack uh, SLC card in the RAID 10 because you usually use SATA cards with RAID and you usually put it some RAID configuration. So I wanted to see how much RAID, uh, how much overhead you can have to put it in, in a hardware RAID. I compare Intel uh, SATA MLC and uh, I compare Verdant PCIe MLC card. Well, you might ask why, why I did not uh, compare uh, more uh, cards. You know, uh, I was told this like 50 uh, vendors on market was last week. This week, maybe 100 vendors on market. I basically cannot uh, compare uh, them all. So, uh, some numbers. Uh, read uh, random uh, reads 16 kilobytes. I mean, do 16 kilobytes because this is what size in the DB use uh, internally. So we can see Virident uh, obviously provides a better performance. Uh, uh, for reads, the stack card uh, better than Intel card, but not much better. And the RAID, uh, as expected, provides about two times improvements. Two times because we use RAID, RAID 10, and for RAID 10 you can, use, you can expect two times improvement. And uh, you see all, all of them are doing much better than uh, hard drives. And uh, for uh, uh, random writes, uh, 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 still provides best performance. Uh, and actually, four uh, stack cards is only like maybe, maybe two times worse. And uh, their Intel MLC card uh, shows MLC nature is like 30% worse than a single uh, single uh, stack uh, SLC card. But uh, that numbers uh, don't make much sense if you don't you don't compare the price. So I, I put also price uh, levels on uh, this solution. <laughs> And uh, yeah, as expected, uh, Virident provides best performance, but it uh, comes with a, also with a kind of good level of uh, price. Actually, I, I'm not sure if I put good numbers for stack. You have a stack uh, right there. They might correct me if I am wrong. But my assumption is that uh, it may be like uh, 1,500 uh, uh, for one card. And actually, uh, hard drives are quite expensive. I use uh, SAS. Uh, SAS hard drives, and if, if you use eight uh, cards, three hundred dollar each, it uh, really comes more expensive than a single uh, stack card. And the Intel, I just took price from Amazon. It's uh, like two hundred seventy dollars for Intel. Card. So PCIe against SATA, which one you should choose? It's a hard question. I like PCIe cards for absolute best and beatable performance. 
And I like it even more because I have free sample. <laughs> So yeah, I enjoy riding on free sports car. Uh, you know, understand? And um, and again, if you're looking for best absolute performance, you might be looking for PCI cards. But if I, I had to buy it myself, uh, I would probably think uh, twice, and I probably would come up with something uh, based on SATA, especially as no as currently I know what kind of cable I need to use, so I can I can put it uh, all, 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 all together. And uh, yeah, I, if you do some uh, simple math from my previous numbers, you can see for SATA, I would say you get better performance per per dollar you put into. <coughs> okay, when when you should use flash. Flash is very good for random reads, both SLC and MLC. If your random reads are intensive, you can choose either SLC and MLC. <coughs> random writes, again, may be challenge for uh, uh, MLC cards. Uh, why? Uh, let's go into lifetime. SLC again provides well, like maybe 20 years of lifetime. That's uh, more than enough for a uh, mm, single database server. And we'll see lifetime is kind of complicated. The vendors, they, look, they like to put numbers like 8 petabytes per lifetime or 15 petabyte rights per lifetime. This sounds quite uh, like scary, 15 petabytes is a lot of data. How really it transforms to a pure workload? And also we have that right amplification factor because flash writes more than you application rights and the Zeta 15 petabytes it is before write amplification so you actually can do less rights from your application oops sorry so I did some uh, I did some calculation I put a TPCC much scale workload on very dense flash marks 1.4 terabyte card uh, my calculation shows that uh, write amplification in this case like 1.1.3 so uh, it's uh, like uh, to put it into numbers. Uh, internally, under this workload, we didn't write 14 percent more than your than uh, my scale writes. And because that uh, redent card is uh, incredibly fast, yeah, it's really fast. And uh, as it is fast, you can do a lot of writes per hour. And this workload, I had like one terabyte of data per hour. And then, if you divide 15 petabytes for one terabyte per hour, you get a lifetime. For this card, under this workload, it will be like 1.5 years. So, when you do this uh, calculation, you understand that uh, MLC card may be not suitable for your workload, or you need to throttle it somehow to do, to do less uh, rise per hour to, to increase increase the card lifetime. And now let's go to flash for my scale. Okay, this is topics Barno will, will likes to talk about. When can you, when a flash helps for my scale? I just will list Barno's idea. Flash is useful for my scale for low latency requirements. For a mixed workload, if you join a large tables when you need high throughput or a high high concurrent. I can type from course. If you use uh, your uh, family home page, maybe flash really not needed for your code. Actually, it is not needed for even for my scale performance work. We actually able to handle uh, load uh, quite well with uh, regular hard drives. And the most important factor, I would say, if you use, if you're going to use my scale with flash, is to choose proper my scale version. I'm saying that because I still see a lot of usage of Go uh, old MySQL 5.1 with old NDB. It is still used in uh, production, and it is uh, really not good for flash. It's uh, like you get your sport car to do outdoor mountain drive. You need what you really need. You need multiple IO threads. You need asynchronous IO. And this all available in performance or 5.5, in MySQL 5.5, or if you still need 5.1 version, you can go with performance or 5.1. So, 
So let's uh, let's do uh, some benchmark with uh, MySQL. For my benchmarks, I took uh, an array based on a stack for cards, array 10, and I took a sys bench or call it 100 gig database against 50 gig memory available. So when we compare with hard drives, uh, we can get like eight time improvements. With proper MySQL version, it is for cloud, you can expect eight time improvements uh, in throughput. <laughs> but uh, I did that benchmark with a flash log asterisk commit equal to. Now if you compare a different uh, flash log, uh, logs and asterisk commit options as a dura uh, durable and not a durable mode for NDB, we still uh, we see that flash actually if it takes commit, does not handle it quite well. The performance throughput is quite uh, visible. So uh, on this, I should uh, point that MySQL has actually four different uh, I/O records. It's regular NADB data. It is a NADB redo logs. It's binary logs. It's NADB system table space. And the location of uh, each of that part uh, really really matters. And when you use uh, NDB flash logs with the commit equal one, you might want you might think what kind of location you choose for your redo files. Because uh, uh, I did another benchmark. Now I put log files on regular RAID with cache, and you see that RAID with cache helps to improve uh, redo log performance again. It uh, gets back to previous 740 transactions per second. Or you can use uh, uh, SSD cards with RAID card with flash. And uh, actually, <coughs> flash also helps just for cache, also helps for a general workload. If you use a RAID card with cache, we can get even better performance. So it seems that the uh, cache helps also for uh, SSD. So you may want to pick your RAID card uh, with flash, with cache, similar words. Uh, second uh, factor, which can be another factor, which can be important, it is log size. Uh, with a big log size, you can get a much better performance. Uh, this is a uh, Benchmark uh, taken on when you have uh, a lot of memory and you have a uh, not proper log size, you can get very unstable performance. To get a stable line, you need big log files, which available in Performance Server. It but also will be available in MySQL 5.6. And the uh, regular concern for a big log file it is bigger recovery time. But for Flash, actually, it is less concern because for Flash, you can do much more random operation per second, so your recovery time should be fine even with big log files. Flushing algorithm is important. In Percona server, we have a keep average flushing algorithm. It performs so much better than a regular MySQL flush. We provide a better stable line, and we provide better performance. With current MySQL flushing algorithm, you have that periodic drops when MySQL uh, occasionally decides to put 100 gigabytes of data at one second on disk, and even Flash cannot handle that quite well. Now, double, double right area is important. What NADB does? NADB internally, when you when NADB uh, 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 writes data from memory to disk, actually it arises two times. It uh, uh, arises to main storage and also it arises to uh, name the double write area. Why NDB does that? It to have data protection. Before, because NDB uses 16K IOs, but internally in a file system and kernel it transforms into 4K blocks. So this uh, risk, if you lose your power during that IO operation, you actually can write only 4K or 8K from your 16K page. That's why NDB does 
perform as a uh, double right two times. Uh, having uh, that a double right after crash, NADB is able to compare data and uh, find out if it was partial right or not partial right. And uh, what, what is problem with it is that, with this, that double right double right area is located in EBD data one in system table space file, and you and the DB hits the same area again and again. And the DB uh, uh, rewrites the same area again and again. And as I told, uh, rewriting for the same area is maybe not good for for SSD because you have uh, you get that the data fragmentation. It causes a lot of errors in cycles. Uh, it may be not a sort of visible for for performance, but it may be better for for uh, general health, especially for MLC card, to put a double write area to some location out of SSD. So we have a special option in Perconia server. You can locate a double write area out of your flash, or you can just move whole EBD data one file out of your flash area. And uh, uh, the development I'm quite uh, excited. Fusion uh, claims to support uh, atomic rights. And uh, what does it mean? That, that means um, that uh, Fusion IO will be able to support atomic 16K right. That, mean that means we will not need a double rate area double right area anymore. And I expect if you disable uh, double right, we can expect like 50% performance increase. So uh, we are waiting when uh, Fusion IO is atomic rise will be available. Uh, several uh, 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 several uh, recommendations. This Percona server, you can enable and disable uh, flushed neighborhood pages. Uh, Flash of neighbor pages was implemented in ODB to fight with it slow random write performance. This is not a concern for Flash anymore. If you're going to show you can uh, choose your NDB log block size 512 or 4K. If you remember, uh, I mentioned the Flash usually internally use 4K size. And if you match a uh, log size, Log block size to 4K. It usually can provide better performance. Uh, file system. If you still decide to use XFS, again you might want to pick to match block size to 4K. Again, it should provide better performance. You need to mount your file system with no barrier options, and you should use a deadline uh, IO scheduler. Default uh, CFQ, which comes with Red Hat, is just uh, useless for uh, SSD and for fast drives. I have no idea why Red Hat still ships uh, Linux with uh, default uh, CFQ scheduler. So, is uh, Flash expensive? Yeah, if you if you look uh, into price price level, you might think that price is uh, Flash is uh, really expensive, but uh, let me uh, let me say if you expect seven time performance, seven time performance increase, that actually you can put seven times more load on one server, and if we can uh, decrease seven rank cabinet to one cabinet, we speak about significant money savings. We are also speaking about money savings on power. If you use seven times less power, it is a very significant month-to-month -month savings on electricity. And then to finalize it, let me show you a new uh, relic setup. Actually, uh, the following talk after this one, new relic will talk about their setup in more details. I just wanted to show you some use case of uh, SSD in real production in a new uh, relic. So um, again, for uh, SSD, we need external enclosure. And Dell, PowerVault, uh, MD1220 seems good choice. So uh, New Relic uses Dell PowerAge R600. 
uh, with uh, external encoder, and they, they use a, a, a rate card uh, H800, and they put 11 Intel 320 SD cards into RAID 5 uh, conf configuration. And it gives them about 5 terabyte uh, available storage uh, on this, in this configuration. And if you put, uh, I put, I did some uh, bench benchmark on this configuration. And if you compare this RAID 5 SSD with a RAID 5 hard drive, again, we're speaking about 6 times performance improvement. So, uh, Flash allows you to get back to that scale-up strategy. Uh, if you remember, the, uh, MySQL started to use that scale-up strategy because MySQL was not able to utilize full power on a single server. And uh, now we have fixes in MySQL, we have uh, very good performance on IOS system and we can get back to the scaling up strategy for my scale. We can put much more workload into a single server instead of using six or seven different servers. Okay, let me get uh, some maybe last quote uh, I got from a customer. So Flash made just everything much faster, but it made also everything much more confusion. Pictures credit and I'm quite excited about Flash. I'm ready to take your questions. Yes? Uh, you had a lot of benchmarks, but you also talked about how Flash can lie in benchmarks. Yes. Can you talk about like how full drives were, things like that, um, when you mentioned that? <coughs> uh, sorry, can you please repeat it? Can you say something about uh, how loaded the drives were, how like how much the garbage collector was working? Uh, well, with uh, Santa cards, uh, it is hard to tell because it doesn't show status. So I kind of, uh, what you can do, you run some workload for 24 hours, and now you assume that you put a garbage collector into heavy workload, it uh, will show you kind of worst case scenario. So you did very long benchmark. Yeah, so you do a very long benchmark, like 24 hours, and you put your workload, and uh, it uh, makes benchmark incredibly hard, because if you need to run the 24 hours cycle, it's really time consuming. More questions? Sorry, yes? Uh, can you talk about the main uh, you know, design decisions from now on that, that may happen in my scale developments, now given that you know, the flash has different you know, uh, access to I mean, they have a lot of different access to that. Uh, well, I, I cannot say about Oracle, uh, what they're going to do. Yeah, we're looking, we're looking to make some improvements. And actually, we already made some improvements in Perconus over if you Look at a performance benchmark. We are doing this constant benchmark research and development cycle. And we have some ideas how we can optimize my scale IOP system. But again, it's very time consuming. We need to write a lot of code in my scale IO. I cannot promise any specific time frames. Yes? Back to the question about your statistics and devices. Have you encountered any devices that actually log? Yeah, actually, both the uh, and Fusion IO provides a lot of uh, statistics uh, through Prod's file system. The only problem, I did not find a good documentation. And if you see a thousand different uh, statistics numbers, it's hard to figure out uh, what you need to look into. Yes? Your uh, log file benchmarks, is that with the log files on the SSD or on, on conventional disk? Uh, which benchmark? The, when you were choosing log file size. Uh, that uh, Bob is uh, uh, log files were on the Viridian card. I, I did that benchmark on Viridian card and logs are located on, on Viridian flash. Why is the larger log file beneficial on the SSD? Or is it just... Uh, because uh, uh, when, you, uh, when you have a lot of memory and you have a very small uh, log size, have kind of unbalanced situation. You, you need to perform still a lot of I.O. operations. You 
you kind of put uh, your energy B is very constant, uh, crazy IO state because your buffer pool needs to get up, keep up with small log size. So in uh, the Germany kind of always performs crazy, out of crazy IO operations. It comes with uh, 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 internal contention and stuff. That's why you see that uh, significant performance uh, drops. Yes, your question. Uh, so again, uh, going back to statistics um, uh, display, uh, when you um, tested in the VLOG, you know, flash log there is going to be two. Okay. Did you see the benefits from flash dropping or was it increased? Mm -hmm. uh, so you showed the graph with two bars when you. Um, let me try to get back to it. Mm -hmm. This one? Yes, yeah, so what's this? So this is just pure flash? Is this pure flash or is this also... This is pure, pure, pure flash. This is pure flash. Is it, uh, what I mean is this is pure flash on the rate without cache. And did you compare pure flash with TRX commit equals to and SATA with TRX commit equals to? Uh, compare pure flash against against SATA against, uh, against normal disk uh, with TRX equals to uh, so uh, this, uh, this is uh, for a TRX uh, equal to no I did not but I don't expect much difference okay, don't yeah I don't expect difference because uh, you no longer log uh, log bounded yes your question on this graph here the rate of cache is that uh, SSD drives behind the rate of cache? No, it's just a, a, regu a regular hard drive. Can you try it on for SSD drives behind, behind rate of cache? Yes, this is on a uh, hard drive. Any more questions? Okay, that's all. Thank you.